something happened. It fell apart. Today's video is brought to you by the JC Sense merch store. We got t-shirts and gaming mats and mugs and all that kind of stuff. So whenever you go buy our stuff, we don't have to put other ads here and other annoying crap. So go buy our stuff. I recently asked you guys uh, what kind of videos you wanted to see going into 2023. And overwhelmingly, people said, we want to see more of your long format vlogs you used to take us on with your builds and stuff. Um, also, too, I apologize if I sound super nasally and not feeling like... <laughs> so, that's the best way to put it, I'm sorry. But anyway, the show must go on. So this is my A1925 build. This is what Black Ice was. We were at the temp gen 10900K. It had the 3090 FE card that was air-cooled in there. And then I decided uh, to build myself a 12th gen system that I ended up never using because when I saw the AM5 rumors, I decided to wait for that. And then now I am building myself my first AMD rig that I've used at home in a long, long time. Uh, in terms of the rationale, we'll talk about some of the parts in a second here. But do you remember, I already showed you guys these distribution plates uh, and pump res combo here. So here they are installed. This one, this bottom one is actually structural, which is kind of neat. Um, the, the screws go down through, because I have the black backing plate on both of these. That's why you can't see through it. I didn't want to leave it transparent, because on the back side, I can actually hide wires now, right here, without them showing through, which will be nice. Uh, and you can see there's still plenty of room here for my cables uh, to be able to pass through. I took this lower piece out, which actually goes right about there. That sort of gives some uh, lower supporting structure. But I took it out because since I'm not gonna go vertical mount on this, I don't need the extra rigidity right here in the center, like the mid plate. But this, there's no more flex because this gives it uh, rigidity. But also too, because the screws right here, this little guy, right there, and right there, this little, the little one right there, and then this one in the corner, have long screws that pass through the mid plate and then even attached to the PSU bracket. So they actually replaced the screws that the bracket was tied into and tie now the distro plate down through that. And I love that it has this cutout right here for the cables to still come through for the graphics card. Here's a, something I'm not happy about. And this is something that I love Singularity computers. I really, really do. I, and they, the specters have all been this way, one, two, and three. These unrefined cutted, or cutting edges here, like where they've cut the acrylic. I don't understand why they don't flame polish this or sand it. Maybe it's just about manpower and extra you know, labor intensive stuff to make that smooth. This to me detracts from the quality of their product. So what I had done over here, this is their, um, the vertical mount distro plate that I told you guys I'm not gonna be using. So I did a little bit of a test. Like I hit this part right here with the, with the torch. And as you can see, it started to polish it up a little bit. But to do it right, I would have absolutely had to have um, like sanded it perfectly smooth because there's such deep grooves in the acrylic from the cutting that it would have to be sanded down first. But then painting the edge, the SEM black, the same trim paint that I used when I painted the tubing. So you can see how well this tubing held up. This is, these are the clear tubes that I painted for this build and they held up phenomenally. They don't scratch. This is, this is actually automotive trim paint. This is the same paint you would find trimmed with like window moldings and mirrors and all that stuff. It's very, very durable. It does not scratch or flake off. Look at this. You can't scratch it off. So it's really good and it bonds really well to plastic. I meant to bring some in today so I could do a test paint on this, but guess what I did? I forgot. So anyway, the thing is, the, the LED light bar in there shines this way across it. So this edge will light up. I'm just a little concerned that because of the, the nature of these rough cuts, it's a lot of edges for the light to refract on. I'm a little concerned it's gonna be too much light right there, shining kind of in my face. But if I'm gonna do it here, and I also have to do it here. I honestly don't know if I want to go through all that. It'll look, it would look good. The thing is, it's hard to tell right, right now because this is the only thing in the case. This is all your attention is, is attracted to. So let's talk about the platform. I told you I was going with an AMD CPU and a lot of discussion on Twitter about why would you do that? 
why would you go AMD? And then if I said I was going Intel, there'd be a lot of people saying, why aren't you going AMD? So it is what it is. I feel like this time around, both AM5 and LGA 1700 CPUs are great no matter which platform you go with. So I am now gonna give AMD a shot back in my home rig because of the fact that I haven't done that in 10 years. So for the motherboard here, I've got the ROG Crosshair X670E uh, Hero. Picked this up at Micro Center today. I have the Crosshair Extreme as well. My biggest concern about the Extreme is the fact that it's a very wide motherboard. It's wider than the Hero. It's like a, a nearly a true EATX, but it also has that 90 degree adapter. So the 24 pin faces straight out, not up. So I was worried about it actually being able to have the wires make it through here without pushing into this. I thought this was gonna take up space and cause a problem, but if you actually look at the way that Singularity Computers designed it, it's uh, it only takes up a few millimeters of that space. So it barely sticks out. So that's not causing me any sort of an issue. I was also concerned about whether or not I was gonna have enough room between this pump and the bracket here because I have 25 millimeters worth of fan right here and then 30 millimeters worth of red. So I wouldn't have been able to use a thick radiator. I'm pretty sure I got SEs. I have to look at my reds. I'm pretty sure I got SEs. If I didn't, then I'll have to order another radiator because a 45 will not fit here with the fans. I don't think. If it will, it'll be close and I don't want it touching. So anyway, there's that. But here's the motherboard. Sexy motherboard right here. Now this one does, unlike the Extreme, this one does not have any sort of screen in it, which is fine. Cause like the, the, the mother or the Crosshair Extreme is wider and it has an LCD display or an LED or OLED, whatever kind of display it is on this heatsink, which gives you some like data to look at on your computer. I've got a much bigger screen right there. Remember this, the sensor panel deal? So I'll be using that, which is gonna matter to me. But the fact that it's a narrower board with a traditional layout for power makes me pretty happy because now you can see I got plenty of room for my cables right here. The other board would have probably been just about even with that, which means the cables would have probably made it, but it would have been a tight bend. There's something else I'm really actually excited for. Initially, you could see all the wires and stuff plugging into the motherboard because this much thickness not being there, there's this huge gap between the motherboard tray, and if I turn it around, you might be able to see it. So there's this huge gap between the motherboard tray. Yeah, see all this right here? which means the wires coming up through was very visible and it was just ugly. It was hard to make it look tidy. That now eats up a lot of that um, visibility, which is good. So this is gonna alternatively make the build look cleaner just because it raised that height, which is gonna block off some of those wires. Now, obviously this needs a CPU. What CPU is Jade going for? But for the CPU, obviously I couldn't go with anything other than the AMD. Now, the cool thing about this is the fact that it's gonna get us all the cores and stuff, and the which is only going to make gaming performance that much better. Can't wait to use it. It is gonna be such an exciting ride. So now I'm gonna go ahead and put it in the motherboard. So technically a portion of the build happened today. Boop. So these are the blocks I have on hand for the AM5 stuff. If you remember, I said one of these was acetal, one of these is full nickel. I might end up going with the acetal one, although the full nickel one would probably provide a little bit better cooling just because of thermal mass. But since my Strix 4090 card is not a nickel, Jesus. Nick, get my scale. It's a 1,295.2 gram block. <laughs> is it heavier than the motherboard? <laughs> wait, no, wait. Yeah, but 1967. Oh no, it's not, 12.95. Okay, still, it because this, it feels, because it's denser, right? Because it's such a small package. <laughs> Just to give you an idea of weight difference, this is with the packaging. But this one's gonna match my my card. I haven't seen this in a while, actually, a, a J work table. I explode when yeah. I work on it. <laughs> so this, as you can see, it's gonna, it's gonna more better match, more better, more better match my 4090. Oh yeah. That's so, however, this is gonna be horizontal because I'm not doing vertical mount. So it doesn't matter as much at that point, but it, see, it still carries the lines across. Yeah. So the question is, is this gonna look super out of place being the only silver thing? 
I think so. I, I think the extra cooling on that will be good and all, but I think we'll be okay because I will go in and voltage tune. That way it's not just dumping more voltage than necessary. So let me go ahead and install the CPU block next. So the way these, these blocks mount on AM5 is actually pretty neat. Remember the bracket does not come off of the motherboard like it used to in the past to replace the backplate. Um, so the way this works is you remove the plastic retention nuts. This goes through the holes. So you get the motherboard, the CPU that goes through. These will be sticking through the back. And then these will thread right into the same backplate, but you use this key to reverse, like you turn it clockwise, technically counterclockwise, but that's clockwise this way. And then one at a time you pull them in in a cross pattern to tighten it up and it will pull it to the block. So it's all retained. Now I'm gonna sit there and add block or screws and standoffs and washers and springs. And then they give you one extra um, of those because there's a spring up in here too. So this is all retained up inside there. You see there's a spring, see how it kind of wobbles around a little bit. So I think there's a spring, there may not be one. It might just be proper height, which is why if you're gonna go delitting, you can't use a standard mount like this because then it'll be too much of a gap. I always like to spread my paste by hand. <laughs> Like, you know the air cleaners? You know the stickers usually clear? Like, no, 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 Go through the hole there. And start to get it to catch. So you just go until the screw stops because the height is exactly like built into the screw. So you don't, have, you don't have to go snug, just like it stops and you're done. Probably one of the coolest mounting mechanisms yet. And I'm gonna leave the plastic on uh, while I'm building on the system because I don't want to scratch it up. So I like the way that the RGB cable comes out underneath like that though, because like there's all that room right there. There's plenty of room to be able to like have that cable hidden. And then when you go up into like, you know, out of your case, you can tuck that up under there and it'll look really good. Ram. Oh, this isn't RGB. I don't know how I feel about that. Like I like Corsair Ram, but I don't want to run IQ just for the RAM. And my my biggest issue with IQ lately, I had DDR4, Dominator Platinum, and IQ was like, hey, firmware update available for your RAM. And I was like, cool. And it updated the firmware for all my RAM. One of them then had one red blinking LED from then on. Just the top one, beep, beep, red. And then the other three work fine, and then that one just has one blinking LED. And I went, oh, something must have worked. Check for firmware update. You're on the latest firmware. There's no reflash button up. Sick. So I have one blinking LED for about the last three months. I probably will go ahead and just try the Dominator Platinums again. This is a special edition, so check that out. The matte black top with the gunmetal. Now, if you guys don't know what you can tell on camera, but this is actually, it's a black slash gunmetal kind of a color on the case. Not fully black, but gosh, this looks really good. I'll probably just go ahead and try this. The nice thing is RAM is easy to change, obviously, if I have an issue and you know, the average consumer is like, I just go and be like, oh, let me try my other set of RAM. It's kind of fortunate, you know, that I, I can do this and I don't take that for granted. I really don't. Not like some of my earlier builds, like Skunk Works and stuff, you know, I had to be very, very mindful of where I spent, you know. These are, this, this build is not like sponsored per se. I mean, I got the water cooling stuff from Performance PCs. Every water cooled build I've ever done has been sponsored by Performance PCs um, to, a, to a point. I mean, there was a while there where I obviously had to be fully out of pocket on that. These are parts I already had, with the exception of the CPU um, and the motherboard. The motherboard was provided by Micro Center. I needed that particular motherboard for BIOS uh, update reasons to make the CPU work. But I, I love my job. And I think this, I, anyone would agree this is a pretty awesome gig. So I, I'm in the unique position now where if something goes wrong, I can try something else out. Um, so. Thank you guys for providing that for me. But as you can see with the gray, I think it looks really good in there. So the 925 <laughs> is pretty interesting because the front uh, bracket for the radiator slash fans is held on by these nuts. <laughs> Got it. I realized I said it when I said it. Anyway, so the front comes out like this, so you can mount the rad and the fans and all that too, or just the fans or whatever your setup's gonna be. And then here's the top one. Uh, the top one's interesting. You'll notice there's nothing in the back that holds it other than, I don't know if you can see it, there's a lip. There's a lip right here that comes out, so it just rests on that. If you go with too thick of a radiator and you have a really big VRM, 
then what will end up happening, well, not even VRM, just where the, where the power plugs are, they can cause the, the plugs can push up on it. And then so instead of it going in there and being flat, resting on that lip, it goes like up like that. So instead of resting on that lip, it'll push it up like that. So it's on the lip, it'll go up. So what I ended up having to do with my other build, because I had a thick rad that was hitting on the wires for the EPS, was I like gorilla taped it down. So I, when I was going to pull it out, I'm like, why would the thing come out? And then I realized like, oh yeah, I taped it. So I had to pull the tape off and get all the residue off. So fortunately, even though I'm adding a 4090 to the loop, and I'm, I'm going with two rads. So I went with a 30 mil instead of the thick rad for the top. So that won't be a problem moving forward, which I'm kind of happy about. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the, the motherboard mounted on here. There's actually a lot of room there, way more than I thought. I, I think that other motherboard, motherboard? <laughs> the other motherboard. No, that would've been motorbuild. Motorboard. <laughs> motorboard. I wanted to show you guys the fans I was gonna use. I have I've not made a 100% positive decision on the fans, but I'm kind of thinking be quiet silent wings. Or not silent wings, but the um, uh, light wings. Because they move a ton of air and they're black frames and stuff with a decent amount of lighting on there. I've used Lee and Lee fans for the last several builds of mine. I like the Lee and Lee fans. It's just, if I if I use the light wings, I can get rid of a whole controller and less wiring there. Um, and then just get creative with the wiring for the ARGB distribution block that I'm gonna use. So all of the IO covers are missing because you had to remove those to use the vertical mount because the vertical mount in here you can use the one down at the bottom right here, or you can use the, the uh, in-wind vertical mount, which is designed to mount to there. I use that one. So now I don't have the IO covers. So I'm either gonna jack them from another case, or I'm gonna get the custom ones from Cable Mod. You know what? I was worried that the Strix card with the water block on here was gonna feel too, like, small. Oh, geez. I was worried that the Strix card was gonna feel too short. Um, but this is perfect. So I'm debating doing a uh, parallel loop with the CPU and the GPU. So like, the tubes come over and into here, but just two tubes and that's it. You know, so if we went in and out, they'll split the flow between the two. Instead of trying to go in series, I just have to see what'll make most sense, most sense loop wise. I need to see now. I plug in my 12 volt cable. It should be able to make the bend and then still clean the side panel. This was actually one of the cable mod cables we were sent. It's got gold combs on there. I'm obviously not using gold. I just had slid these out of the way. But anyway, I put these three down to there. Oh yeah, dude, money. Make sure that's all of them. I don't remember redoing it. I'll probably have to end up having like a comb or two when I get my actual cables to train them. And then down to the side like that. I kind of wish that that was lined up perfectly with the cable, but then it would impact with the power supply. I'm liking it. I was, like I said, I was worried that the Strix card was going to feel too short, but no, it's just like proportionate with the build, especially when you look at it straight on. I'm almost a little triggered by how bright the GeForce RTX silver is here. Like I almost wish that this was like a metal or darker that really stands out now. So believe it or not, this lower distro plate's actually not that Convenient. This is the outlet for the pump. This is the fill port and then that's the return. There's no drain built into this. So that's problem number one. Problem number two is as you can see, the proximity of that port to that port is gonna make fittings very tight right here. I'm gonna have a front radiator and a top radiator, but this is nothing more than a very fancy way of replacing a tube to go from one side to the other. Now that port does not conveniently line up with anything else. So I can't have like these really pretty like 90 degree deals going, you know what I mean? So it's just, it's nice, but it's one of those things where it's like, it's, it was built by Singularity for this case. So was the distro blocks or the, the pump. So it's not like I'm trying to incorporate something that was meant for something else in here, like a universal. It's not very well positioned, if you will. But regardless, we'll make it work. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do yet, but We'll make it work, it'll be neat. The nice thing is these lines for the RGB being kind of angled like 45s and stuff in there, which means if I utilize 45s in the tubing in some way, it'll go, I think, we'll see. But what I'm gonna do next, I'm gonna go ahead and get the radiators mounted to their brackets because the fans will be going on the inside, pulling air in, pushing air out the top. 
uh, I can mount the rads directly to the brackets and then the fans to the rads later. I might have to do fittings on the bottom for the front rad, I'm not entirely sure. Fittings on the top rad need to go back here. Otherwise, there's too much happening up here. If I do fittings there, fittings there, fittings there, that's too much. So this is the EK Quantum Surface, uh, the S360. The S usually means slim. This should be a 30 mil. It's gonna be a 30 mil. If it was a 45, it'd be the size of the box. So thank God I thought that one through. I'm pretty sure I did. Um, it's funny, because it's a black rad, but as you can see, it's got these kind of a, I don't know, that's very textured. I'm probably gonna paint those, honestly. I don't want the silver in here. Because even then, that doesn't go very well with like anything else in this build. Although it looks kind of neat. I guess we'll see. Let me tell you about this distro plate again. Because it mounts through the chassis, like I said, and adds some rigidity, I could have taken this side panel off right here to be able to slide it in and have access to my fittings and all that and plug in the tubing. I'll have to work at it through this side if I'm gonna do that, although I won't be able to put the fittings on and then push it through because it'll hit this. Normally I could take that off, but guess where the screws are? They're going down through this piece, which this is on top of. So I cannot get that side piece out, which means to get it out, I have to distro block off, distro plate off, take that off, mount the rad, put it all back. I might just leave this over. It seems like a pretty nice contrast. I also am gonna be going with the I think I'm gonna be going with the black. I don't know yet if I'm gonna go with black fittings or my titanium fittings. It's really not in the way though. Like you don't really see, from the side you can't see it at all. It's covered by the bracket. Then the fans will be in front of it. So it's not gonna be like overpowering in your face, you know? See, now I've got all kinds of room. I want to like smush those cables anymore. <laughs> so happy about that. <laughs> that was one of those uh-oh moments as I was building my black eye build. I told you guys it wasn't going to take me a million years to get this one done. Of course, J works fast when it's his stuff. Okay, so I'm thinking about using the Be Quiet Silent Wings fans. I've not made a definitive decision yet. It depends on if I want to <clears throat> use the illuminated blades on those and then that neat accent ring, which you can't really see from the side anyway, or the Black Lee and Lee V2s because that will then give me all the edge lighting I'm used to, but also very clean cable routing. And I think I have the adapters, which make me able to use this with the same distribution block as before with the JST adapters. So I've got some choices to make. One of my Lee and Lee uni fans was rattling. So there's that. But any, I've never seen a, ma a, ram, a fan manufacturer not have a fan that would rattle over time. So there's that to do with. But there's clearly enough room to clear this thing right here. But you know what's not, what there's not enough room for, on this side anyway, is a tube and a fan to go up. So I think this is gonna have to no doubt be my return to here. Cause I can't go from here down. I'd have to go like in front or something. This can for sure, does that even line up at least on that plane? I doubt it. It's gonna be interesting to see how this loop goes, to be honest. I would not be surprised if I ended up ditching the distro plate entirely, if you wanna know the truth. I wouldn't be surprised and that would stink but it's a possibility. But I can see it coming together. The tubing is gonna to be an adventure. And I think that's where we're gonna go ahead and end this video. So thanks for watching. If you have any suggestions on uh, some of the tubing routing, put them down below. I'm kind of curious. I still think a parallel from here to here makes sense. And then going from like, I don't know, I still, and then I have to go from like here up to the right. It's gonna be weird. It's gonna be weird. I know I've seen some people make a little plate right here that they'll just go fittings to there on the backside, get it up to here. But I don't know how I'm going to do this. Okay, thanks for watching guys. As always, we'll see you in the next one.